What's up everyone, and welcome back to the channel. This week, we're diving deep into the world of AI, exploring some of the most groundbreaking research papers that have recently emerged. Get ready to have your mind blown as we break down the latest advancements in 3D scene generation, video manipulation, AI agent benchmarking, and more. We've got some seriously cutting edge stuff to cover. So buckle up, grab your favorite beverage, and let's jump right in. Paper number one, VO2, Redefining Video Generation with AI. Let's we're diving into some seriously impressive AI tech with a look at Google DeepMind's VO2. What makes this paper stand out is the sheer quality and control it offers in video generation. Unlike other AI models, VO2 isn't just spitting out generic clips. It's creating realistic motion and high quality output, up to 4K resolution. We're talking about a level of detail and realism that really sets it apart. What's really groundbreaking is how VO2 handles prompts. It can faithfully follow both simple and complex instructions and convincingly simulates real-world physics along with a wide array of visual styles. The model shows a deep understanding of physics and is able to follow even complex instructions. This means you can get incredibly specific with your ideas then, exploring different camera angles, movements, and shot styles. Now, the paper doesn't just make these claims, it backs them up with benchmarks. VO2 has outperformed other leading video generation models based on human evaluations. In head-to-head -head comparisons, it performed best in overall preference and for its ability to follow prompts accurately. In one example, participants viewed 1,003 prompts and respective videos from the MovieGenBench dataset. The paper also includes a range of prompts and the videos that were generated to show the scope of VO2's ability. These examples range from close-ups of a DJ to a flock of pink flamingos, a car drifting in a city, a lab scene, a dog swimming, and even a view of a Renaissance palace. This showcases the versatility of the model. However, it's important to note that the paper also points out the limitations. Creating videos that are consistently realistic, dynamic, or intricate remains a challenge. The paper admits that maintaining consistency throughout complex scenes or scenes with complex motion is something the team will continue to develop and refine. Paper number two, an agent benchmark with tasks in a simulated software company. We're diving into an exciting project called the Agent Company, an agent benchmark with tasks in a simulated software company. What makes this project stand out is that it's a benchmark specifically designed to evaluate how well AI agents perform on real-world professional tasks. This is not just about simple games or puzzles. The Agent Company is about testing AI in a simulated environment that mirrors the complexities of a modern software company. The project provides an extensible benchmark for evaluating AI agents that interact with the digital world like a real employee these agents work by browsing the web, writing code, running programs, and even communicating with other coworkers. This benchmark is crucial for understanding how AI can accelerate or even autonomously perform work-related tasks. This has significant implications for industries considering AI adoption and for understanding the potential effects on the labor market. The tasks in the agent company cover a wide range of professional roles, including software engineers, product managers, data scientists, HR staff, financial staff, and administrators. The benchmark includes diverse task types like code tasks, conversational tasks, mathematical reasoning, image processing, and text comprehension. The project utilizes Docker images for each task, containing all necessary files like initialization scripts, grading functions, and task instructions. It also offers both a result-based evaluation and sub-checkpoint checking. The evaluation methods include both deterministic and LLM-based evaluators. The project is available on GitHub and offers a quick setup process, allowing users to get the entire environment up and running in just minutes. Paper number three, AnyDoc, animation creation made easier. We're exploring a fascinating new AI tool that's set to revolutionize animation production. AnyDoc. What makes this paper unique is its approach to automating the colorization of line art in videos, streamlining the animation workflow, and significantly reducing the amount of manual work. This isn't just another coloring tool. AnyDoc is designed to address the challenges of aligning character designs with line art and maintaining temporal consistency in video. The core innovation of AnyDoc lies in its all-in-one model, which leverages priors from video diffusion models. It introduces an explicit correspondence mechanism with an injection module to accurately align color information from reference images to input sketches. This is a huge leap forward as previous methods often required manually colored keyframes and dense line art guidance. 
AnyDoc is able to work with binarized sketches and data augmentation techniques to further improve the training process. AnyDoc's two-stage training strategy is also a key differentiator. It allows the model to interpolate between keyframes, reducing the need for sketching intermediate frames, and enabling the creation of smooth and coherent animations, even from sparse inputs. This means animators can now produce complete animations using only the start and end sketches of a sequence. One of AnyDoc's standout features is its flexible usage. It can generate consistent colorizations across different video clips, even when the sketches vary significantly in pose or scale using the same reference. The model also preserves the identity of characters when different reference images are applied to the same sketch sequence, adapting finer details like lighting and background accordingly. Paper number four, Dispose, Disentangling Pose Guidance for Controllable Human Image Animation. We're talking about Dispose, a novel approach to controlling how animated figures move in videos. What makes this paper really unique is how it disentangles pose guidance into two key components, motion field guidance and key point correspondence, without needing additional dense inputs like depth maps. This approach allows for more generalizable and effective control, which means it works well even when the reference character and driving video have significant differences in body shape. The core idea behind Dispose is to extract robust control signals directly from the skeleton pose map and a reference image. Instead of relying on just sparse pose information, Dispose generates a dense motion field from the sparse motion field and the reference image. This dense motion field provides region-level motion guidance, ensuring that the animation follows the desired movements more accurately. Think of it as filling in the blanks between the key points of the skeleton so the animation flows more naturally and realistically. In addition to the motion field, Dispose also uses key point correspondence to maintain visual consistency. It extracts diffusion features corresponding to pose key points from the reference image. These point features are then transferred to the target pose ensuring that the animated figure keeps its distinct identity throughout the video. This is crucial for maintaining the character's appearance and preventing it from morphing into something else entirely. To integrate Dispose into existing video generation models, the authors have designed it as a plug and play module, similar to ControlNet. This means you can easily add Dispose to your existing models without needing to retrain the whole thing from scratch. Paper number five, Piotometric Stereo-Based Large Reconstruction Model. We're exploring a groundbreaking new approach to 3D reconstruction with the paper called PRM. What makes PRM stand out is its use of photometric stereo to achieve high quality mesh reconstructions with fine grain local details. Unlike other large reconstruction models, PRM doesn't rely on images with fixed and simple lighting conditions. Instead, it renders photometric stereo images by varying materials and lighting, which not only enhances the precision of local details, but also makes the model more robust to variations in image appearance. This is a significant step forward in creating highly detailed and accurate 3D models. The core of PRM involves generating photometric stereo images through physically-based rendering, PBR, with randomly varied materials, lighting, and camera poses. Along with these images, depth, normal, albedo, and lighting maps are also generated. These images and maps are then used to encode a mesh through a network. All of these associated maps, along with the rendered images, are used for supervision during training. This diverse range of supervisions ensures that the model learns to capture fine details and variations effectively. PRM also uses a real-time rendering method and mesh rasterization for online image rendering, which provides enhanced flexibility. This approach allows for differentiable PBR, which makes it possible to use multiple photometric supervisions and model specular color accurately for better geometry optimization. This is a key advantage as it leads to higher quality reconstructions, especially in modeling complex lighting effects. Additionally, the system uses an explicit mesh as its 3D representation. Paper number six, FCVG, generative in-betweening through frame-wise conditions-driven video generation. We're gonna be exploring a really cool paper titled Generative In-Betweening Through Frame-Wise Conditions-Driven Video Generation, or FCVG for short. Now, you might be wondering what makes this paper special? Well, it tackles a big problem in video generation, maintaining temporal stability when creating frames between two key input frames. Existing methods often struggle with this, 
especially when there's a significant difference between the keyframes, leading to shaky and incoherent transitions. FCVG's unique approach is that it provides an explicit condition for each frame, which makes it much easier to define the path of the interpolation. So, how does FCVG work its magic? The method extracts matched lines from the two input frames. These matched lines can then be easily interpolated frame by frame. These interpolated lines act as frame-wise conditions, which are then seamlessly integrated into existing video generation models. This means that FCVG can be used with other video generation models, making it very flexible. This approach allows for much more stable video generation, even with both linear and nonlinear interpolation curves. The researchers also did some tests by removing key conditions. They found that removing the line matching condition neg negatively affects the overall motion of the scene, and removing the pose condition impacts the details of human movements. In their experiments, FCVG showed impressive results across a range of scenarios, such as natural landscapes, complex human poses, and camera movements. It even works well with animations. They included an ablation study where they removed the matching and pose conditions. The results of removing these conditions are shown in the paper. Although the method produces great results, the authors do acknowledge limitations. You can check out the paper to see examples of these limitations, including situations where the method struggles with a large amount of motion and deformation. Paper number seven, Wonderland, navigating 3D scenes from a single image. We're exploring a super cool project called Wonderland, navigating 3D scenes from a single image. Now, what makes this paper stand out? Well, unlike many 3D scene generation methods that need multiple views or time-consuming optimization, Wonderland creates high-quality, wide-scope 3D scenes from just a single image, and it does it in a feed-forward manner. That's pretty unique. The core of Wonderland lies in its clever use of a camera-guided video diffusion model. This model is designed to generate videos that follow specific camera trajectories. This creates video latents that contain multi-view information while maintaining 3D consistency. Think of it like the model creating a short video of the scene based on a virtual camera movement, all from one still image. These video latents are then used to construct a 3D Gaussian splatting, 3D GS, representation of the scene. The researchers then use a large-scale reconstruction model, which operates in the latent space of the video diffusion model. This model is trained using a progressive strategy, allowing it to efficiently generate high-quality 3D scenes. The whole process happens in a feed-forward manner meaning it's fast. The resulting 3D scenes are not just simple reconstructions. They are wide scope and can be extensively navigated. You can also explore these scenes using multiple camera trajectories. In short, Wonderland is a significant step forward in single view 3D scene generation. It leverages the power of video diffusion models to create 3D aware video latents, which are then used to build detailed 3D scenes with extensive navigation capabilities. It's a game changer for quickly generating 3D scenes from just a single image. Paper number eight, Mastering 3D Trajectory for Multi-Entity Motion in Video Generation. Let's dive into another exciting new paper titled 3D Master, Mastering 3D Trajectory for Multi-Entity Motion in Video Generation. What makes this project really special is its ability to control the 3D movement of multiple entities within a generated video. This isn't just about simple 2D motion. 3D Trage Master allows for precise control of both the location and orientation of objects in 3D space. Think of it like this. You can direct a human, a robot, or even abstract elements like fire to move along specific 3D paths, including complex actions such as 3D occlusions, rotations, and turns. 3D Trage Master has six degrees of freedom, DOF, or entity control. This level of control is pretty unique in the field of text-to-video generation. It can generate videos with diverse entities such as humans, animals, robots, and even abstract concepts like fire or a breeze against various backgrounds like cities, forests, beaches, and glaciers. You can even fine tune the appearance of the entities, adjusting things like hair, clothing, and accessories, all while controlling their motion in 3D. The method involves two training phases. First, a domain adapter is used to minimize the impact of training videos. Then, an object injector module is added after the 2D spatial self-attention layer to integrate the prompts and 3D trajectories. Specifically, entity prompts are encoded into latent embeddings and paired pose sequences are encoded using a learnable pose encoder. 
These are then fused to form entity trajectory correspondences, which are used to condition the video generation process. The generated videos can include complex 3D trajectories with up to three entities at once, each moving independently. 3D Tragmaster uses a text prompt to define the entities, a learnable pose encoder for trajectories, and gated self-attention layer for motion fusion to ensure the generated videos match the desired motion. Paper number nine. PanoDreamer 3D Panorama Synthesis from a Single Image What makes PanoDreamer unique is its ability to create a coherent 360-degree 3D scene from just a single 2D input image. This is a significant leap from previous methods that often struggle with consistency and visible seams when generating panoramic scenes. Unlike other methods, which generate scenes sequentially, PanoDreamer tackles the problem as a single image panorama and depth estimation challenge. PanoDreamer's method involves two key optimization tasks. First, it generates a 360 degrees panoramic image using an in-painting diffusion model. This is framed as an optimization task solved through an alternating minimization strategy. During this process, the input texture is progressively propagated outward to create the full panorama. Then, it estimates a corresponding 360 degrees depth map, also using alternating minimization to align overlapping monocular depth map patches. This ensures a consistent depth map throughout the entire scene. Once the panoramic image and its depth map are obtained, the scene can be reconstructed by inpainting any small occluded regions and projecting them into 3D space. PanoDreamer's approach is different from methods like LucidDreamer and WonderJourney, which add details sequentially and often produce visible seams when looping back to the input image. PanoDreamer, on the other hand, ensures consistency across the entire 360-degree scene. The project was funded by Leah Inc. and used resources from Texas A&M High Performance Research Computing. The researchers also provide a comparison of their method with baseline methods, showing that PanoDreamer outperforms them in terms of consistency and overall quality. Paper number 10, Genesis, a generative and universal physics engine for robotics and beyond. We're diving into an incredibly ambitious project called Genesis, a generative and universal physics engine for robotics and beyond. What makes Genesis truly unique is that it's not just another physics engine. It's designed to be a comprehensive platform for robotics, embodied AI, and physical AI applications. It's essentially a multifaceted tool that combines a universal physics engine, a robotic simulation platform, a photorealistic rendering system, and a generative data Data engine all into one. At its core, Genesis is a universal physics engine rebuilt from the ground up, capable of simulating a wide array of materials and physical phenomena. This engine is highly optimized with GPU accelerated parallel computation, achieving simulation speeds that are many times faster than real time. For instance, when simulating a manipulation scene, it runs at 43 million FPS, 430,000 times faster than in real time. It also includes features like auto hibernation to speed up simulations with static entities. Beyond just physics, Genesis this includes a generative framework that can automatically produce various types of data. This includes physically accurate videos, camera motion, human and animal character motion, robotic manipulation policies, fully interactive 3D scenes, and even speech audio and facial animation. This generative aspect is powered by a VLM-based agent that uses the simulation's APIs to create 4D dynamic worlds, which can then be used to generate the various data modalities. The platform also supports the simulation of soft robots and hybrid robots. Genesis aims to use this generative agent to create robotic policies and demonstration data for various skills. In short, Genesis is an incredibly powerful and versatile tool that aims to be a foundational platform for robotics and AI research. It provides both a high-performance physics simulation environment and a generative data engine. That's all for this week's AI paper breakdown. From 3D to video and AI agents, these advancements are pushing the limits of what's possible. Which project was your favorite? Let me know in the comments and hit that subscribe button for more AI content.